Big hello to everybody. What we're going to be looking at tonight is this reactive circuit that's run off a uh, generator. One Luke has been working on, uh, doing a fair bit of work on actually. This is similar to his original setup. Um, I do not have my motor direct coupled to the generator itself. I'm using a belt. This way it's really easy for me to change motors. This motor is a 180 volt DC motor. Um, that is the speed controller for it and of course our control panel, our watt meter. Um, so the AC goes in to our speed controller and of course converted to DC pulses which go to our motor. Our generator is a 2.2 um, kilowatt uh, might be a little bit larger than one that uh, Luke was using but that's what I had so that's what we're using being a little bigger we'll draw a little more power and uh, inside also has a fairly large fan as well I've got a small microwave oven transformer I'm trying first um, that of course is hooked up by our reactive circuit setup, meaning our cap uh, in series from our generator through the cap into the MOT, out of the MOT back to the generator. <coughs> These three caps here um, are for the exciter circuit in the generator. When you buy these El Cheapo generators, they throw a cap in of any size just as long as it works. This one that I've pulled apart had a 24 microfarad cap in it. The other one down there, which is the exact same generator, had a 14 microfarad cap in it. These can be tuned a lot better than what they come factory. And I found in this case 21 microfarads is the best performance. Um, that simply means that it's still enough to keep the 240 volt main windings alive and ready to fire up whilst drawing the least amount of um, power. So the exciter circuit actually consumes power. Probably 80 to 90 watts and of course this having a 4 kilowatt motor on it you would never notice the load of 90 watts through that 4 kilowatt motor but it is there that's something we'll be looking at a little later on or in the next half of this video so our red clip lead there is simply going on the other side of the cap to fire up our reactive circuit we're drawing 3.7 watts at the moment that is the idle current of our pulse width modulator or speed controller. So um, we'll fire him up now and we'll let the speed up to 38. Now this does wind up slowly because it's out of an exercise machine so it um, doesn't throw you off as soon as you hit the button. RPM has a lot to do with this half and that half of the circuit. So, um, I'll turn the off for a moment. Now, the red one here set on 10 times. So 10 times on the voltage trace at the probe, it's giving us about 200 volts peak to peak. Um, I'll leave that there. And as you can 
do you a lot of noise on Channel 2 at the moment, which is our current probe across the 0.1 ohm resistor. We first something we've hooked up. 87.5 watts, and we're on speed 32. That's just uh, future reference for the next half of this video. So, uh, once again, 86. Power's terrible here, it's very unstable. Between 85 and 86 watts. Going to hook up our reactive circuit. Motor picks up a little bit. And our power consumption has gone down. The load we're driving from the secondary of the transformer. Yep. 6.8 ohms, 7 watts. And you can see my resistor is very inductive, but uh, you can make out that the current is leading the voltage. The circuit's right and it's working as it should. So uh, once again we disconnect it. And we'll connect it. So it works a treat. So we've managed to achieve what Luke showed us. And um, all seems to work well. We can drive a load on the secondary um, while dropping the input. So um, that's a 6 ohm load, 6.8 ohm load, and seems to have a negative effect on the setup. Now, being a 400 watt motor, we will notice the slightest of changes. Um, but as we've seen with our watt meter, it was uh, dropping. And I think the power factor was about 65, 66. I'm not sure how this box will react with this meter. So we're using the meter only as a primary indicator at this point in time. Um, and by no means completely trustworthy. So uh, what we're going to do now is switch the camera off and we're going to have a look at the part of the generator that was totally forgotten about which is the exciter circuit or the tank circuit um, within the generator which of course is just a set of coils um, other than this set we have our main set of coils for a 240 volt we have a small set of windings in there for our exciter circuit and the exciter circuit is fired up by a couple of small magnets on the rotor. So uh, the magnets fire up the exciter circuit, the exciter circuit makes sure there's a decent magnetic field there to fire up our main output. So now we're going to have a look at what's actually happening inside this exciter circuit and we hook our reactive circuit up to it, uh, which is something that hasn't been done. So um, I'll go ahead and hook my meters up to it. We're simply going to take one of these leads off. Um, they, of course, should be discharged because they're going through a coil, but always check to make sure. I've been bitten twice already, so I should listen to myself. We're going to take our AC amp meter, hook one side of it on here, one side of it on our cap for the exciter circuit, and we're going to take our bolt meter and put it across the cap. That's going to give us how much um, power is actually being consumed by the exciter circuit itself. So, um, sure what we might do quickly, now that that's disconnected, and that's disconnected, we'll fire it back up to 32, where we had it before, 
and we'll have a look at the power consumption on the watt meter. Now the speed control is designed to keep this motor at a stable RPM regardless of load. So it'll be now at around about the same RPM. And we're drawing 53, 53, 53 watts. So you'll need to know this when we hook this back up and work out how much power our solar circuit is consuming. So once again, um, with the alternator completely open, um, that means the solar circuit disconnected and also our reactive circuit, so there's no load and we're drawing 51 to 52 watts. Alright, so I'll go ahead and hook the meters up to this half and we'll have a look. Okay, we have our two meters set up to the exciter circuit of the generator. Uh, here we are on the amp scale and we are set on... Where's the light on this thing? That works well. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's even worse. The camera doesn't like that. Okay, so we set on AC on a 10 amp scale and we are set on AC volts and as you can see if I rock it backwards and forwards we create a voltage because of the magnets on the rotor now they're only very small magnets just enough to fire up um, our U-boot circuit and uh, get that up and running and then that circuit fires up our big circuit and we go to draw some power off it. So let's have a look what this exciter circuit does and what happens to the power being consumed by that circuit when we hook up our reactive circuit. So we'll start up again and I'll take out the 38 it does go up to 60 but we won't drive it that fast, things will probably fly to pieces and that'll be like 75 thirds. So I'll take the 38, once the exciter circuit kicks in, I'll we'll drop it down. And there you go. So um, we'll drop this back down to our 32 where we had it before.
and something from the side of circuit is why you're seeing the watt going down here. And I'd say there's very little power being put across. Actually, what we'll do is uh, we'll take you down here and show the scope there for a minute. Another B and M. Put on AC. And we're simply going to have a look at the voltage across the resistor. So we've got 1.2, 1.27 volts across 6.8 ohms. So very little power being dissipated by our resistor here. Um, if we do the sums here, 53.3 watts, 241, 240 milliamps at 12.86 volts. We remove our reactive circuit. And you notice no change in the motor. However, now 627, 25 milliamps at 25 volts. And now 62 watts. So you'll do the math, I think, you'll see what we take off of here is what's taken off of here. Um, so that's uh, why this reactive circuit can drive a load and drop our power input because this reactive circuit seems to be somehow tuned to the spider circuit and uh, causes this to um, consume less power. So, uh, once again, I hook him up. No change in motor noise. So, no further load placed on the motor. Um, not so much we're removing um, or putting back power into the system, we're simply removing some of the power being consumed by a side of circuit. That's what was missing in Luke's uh, first setup he had. Um, I don't know if he's still got it or not. If he has, very easy to uh, chuck your voltage meter and your amp meter across your exciter circuit and uh, have a look for yourself. But um, I don't think it's the reactive circuit that's um, removing or putting power back into the grid. I think it's uh, the reactive circuit is reacting with the exciter circuit and the power consumption drop in the exciter circuit is what is dropping the wattage on the input. Alright, so uh, get this up and posted and um, go from there I guess.